My name is Joel Richard Shaddles, Jr. My age is 66. Today's date is November 7th, 2009. We're in Atlanta. Relationship to partner, I'm his son. I'm Joel Richard Shaddles, Sr. My age is 85. Today's date is November the 7th, 2009 in Atlanta, Georgia, and I am his father. Hello, I am Joel Richard Shaddles, Jr., and this is my dad, Joel Sr. My dad was born and raised in Atlanta, Georgia. He was born in 1924 in the Fulton Bag and Cotton Mill Village and raised in the Grant Park section of Atlanta. I'm going to ask him a series of questions, and uh, then we'll probably get into some dialogue as we go along other than the questions, but we're going to start it off that way. Dad, what street were you born on? I was born on Pearl Street. That area is known these days as Cabbage Town. My dad was employed at Fulton Bag as foreman of the weave room operations. What streets in the Grant Park area did you live on? We lived on Loomis Avenue, Bryan Street, and Park Avenue. The houses at 399 Loomis Avenue and 393 Park Avenue were torn down to make room for the construction of Interstate 20. Okay. What schools did you attend here in Atlanta? I attended Grant Park Grammar School. Oak Smith Junior High School and Commercial Senior High School. I believe the new Grant Park School is still standing, but the others have been torn down. Do you recall if you worked any odd jobs as a kid? Oh, yes. I worked all sorts of odd jobs. I went around the neighborhood sometimes offering to clean up a, a yard for for whatever money they would give me, and I took that money to my mother because of the depression. Uh, I caddied at James L. Key golf course uh, for a while, and I had some various afternoon jobs after senior high school. I worked at the credit bureau for a while. I worked at Walensky Leather Company for a while. I worked after school for the school. I I installed the Dewey Decimal System for the school library. Well, you mentioned a couple of schools that you attended. How many high schools were in Atlanta when you were growing up? At the time I was growing up, there were four high schools, senior high schools. There was boys high and girls high for students who expected to continue on in college. There was tech high for boys who wanted to go into the trades and commercial high for boys and girls who expected to go into office work. Where did your mom and dad do their shopping? There were no shopping centers per se at the time I was growing up. They bought their groceries at Crudman's on Memorial Drive at the corner of Boulevard. Mama could phone in her order, and it would be delivered by bicycle. Same for drugs. Huff Drugs at the corner of Woodward and Boulevard was our drugstore. Shoes and dry goods were bought at Brown Hayes Company at the corner of Edgewood Avenue and Boulevard, and Brown Hayes gave S&H green stamps. Well, I'm not going to ask you right now. If we have any time at the end, I'll get you to explain that S&H green stamp thing because a lot of folks aren't going to know what that is. How did you meet my mom? I met her at Emanuel Baptist Church on Memorial Drive during a young person's meeting on a Sunday night. I think I had just turned 12, and she would be 12 in December 1936. Wow. You met at 12, so when did you two get married? We got married in August 1942 in Conyers, Georgia. The total cost of our wedding was $5, and that included our wedding dinner after the ceremony. It was on a Saturday. 
I had worked until 2 p.m. that Saturday afternoon. I took the streetcar from Fort Mac into town and bought me a new jacket and then took the streetcar to her home on McPherson Avenue in East Atlanta. I had to be back at work at 8 a.m. on Monday. We had been married 55 and a half years when she passed away in 1998. Did you serve in the military during World War II, Dad? Yes, I was drafted into the Army at age 18 in March 1943. I served in Europe. I was wounded in action on August the 9th, 1944, and returned to the States in November 1945. I was discharged at Camp Gordon in Augusta, Georgia. Well, you told me that you were wounded. Can you tell us real quick how that happened? I was wounded by, I got shrapnel wounds from a German hand grenade that we call the potato masher. Okay. How many children do you have? In addition to you, I have two more sons and one daughter. I have 13 grandchildren and 17 great-grandchildren. Wow, that's a, that's a lot of generations in itself. We've heard that your generation has been called the greatest generation. How do you think about that? I don't agree with that statement. In my opinion, my parents were a part of the greatest generation for these reasons. They were born 15 years after the end of the Civil War. A huge depression followed that war. They suffered through World War I. They lived through the Great Depression, and they suffered again through World War II. Can you tell me just a little bit about your mom and dad's education? Yes. My dad dropped out of school at the end of the third grade. His dad had become ill and unable to work. My dad went to work at a cotton mill in Gordon County, Georgia, at age eight. He had become the source of income for his mother and nine siblings. My mother never attended school. Her dad left the family when Mama was three years old. Her only sibling was a newborn sister. At age three, Mama worked alongside her mother in the fields picking cotton. The baby was left in a basket under a shade tree. At about age eight, Mama went to work in a cotton mill. I understand she made about $2 per week. Her stepdad met her at the mill and took all of the money from her. So it sounds like they had just very little formal education. That's true. Their education were not gotten in public schools but my parents were educated. My dad taught at least one year a course in textile engineering to Georgia Tech students. The classes were held at the mill. My mother taught a Sunday school class for young women for more than 25 years at her church. My mother was elected president of the PTA at Grant Park Elementary School more than once. She was also elected president of Georgia Baptist Women's Missionary Union. So what did grandmother and granddad do during World War II? I think the perfect example of why I consider my parents the greatest generation is what they did during World War II. Five of their six sons were serving in the military. Four of the five were in combat, two in the Pacific and two in Europe. They had three sons-in-law in in the military. Two of their daughters were living back at home, along with four grandchildren. My dad, in addition to working six days a week at the mill, was block warden in the Civil Patrol to make certain all the lights were turned off or at least blocked from outside view. My mother felt she needed to do something more than what she was doing, so she went to work at Atlanta Paper Company. Her first payday, she and my dad talked about the money she was earning, 
and they agreed they did not want to become accustomed to being rich. My mother gave her entire pay to the church to help the needy. Mama was also named Mother of the Year at Atlanta Paper Company. If you could choose, Dad, which generation would you select now as being the one you would prefer to grow up in? I would prefer to grow up in the generation I grew up in. Well, I'm not going to chase that any further. I can understand why. Well, tell us a little bit about why. Maybe I don't know all the reasons. We had the freedom to play in the streets without supervision. We walked to school. There were no school buses. We walked either alone or with our school friends. We were free to spend the day at Grant Park playing baseball or just fooling around, go swimming, all those things without ever feeling fear of being accosted or molested. My buddies and I would walk the railroad tracks to Bird Adams Boy Scout Camp north of Smyrna. We would also walk the railroad tracks to Ponce de Leon Avenue to see the Atlanta Crackers play baseball. Well, just how did it feel growing up in such a large family of 12 children? It was absolutely wonderful. I was number seven. I had three sisters older than me, three sisters younger. I had four brothers older than me and one younger. Each of us, I'm sure, felt we were the most special child in the world. We had everything we needed and some of what we just wanted, except we didn't have any money. We got a lot of discipline, but a whole lot more of love. Well, speaking more on money for a second, uh, when you were little, did you get an allowance? Yes, I sure did. Those of us, which would be probably those under the age of about 10, every Saturday morning, Daddy lined us up, and each one of us got a penny, unless Mama had told him that somebody had misbehaved too much. Well, now that you've grown up, Dad, how do you spend your days? That you're, you know, you're 85 years old now. A lot of folks think you're probably just kicking back and watching TV. Tell us what you really do. I listen to my country and gospel music. I work five or six crossword puzzles every day. I write stories for my 17 great-great-grandchildren, and I work on our Shadows family genealogy. I had a cousin who always told me, keep your brain going and feel like you're needed. She lived to be 97 years old. Well, you said you read a lot. Tell us who your favorite authors are. Jeffrey Archer, James Missioner, Agatha Christie, and Rex Stout's Nero Wolf books. I enjoy reading and rereading James Clavell's books about Hong Kong and Japan. Thinking back a little bit, we've just passed a, a presidential election. Tell us who your favorite president was over the years. My favorite was Harry Truman. I only regret that I never voted for him. But the older I get, the more I realize what a truly great president he was. And remember, he never wanted to be president. 